Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Week of Bugs. This week, we will be covering three different songs. The Itsy Bitsy Spider, The Flight of the Bumblebee, and La Cucaracha. At the end of the class, we will be doing a movement game and finish with a sign language song focused on colors. We will also be discussing different insects and how they have inspired composers to write beautiful music throughout the ages. The first song that we're going to look at is the Itsy Bitsy Spider. On the right hand side, I have included a column of house and garden spiders you might see throughout the year. Though the Itsy Bitsy Spider is known as a nursery rhyme and tune, it was originally written for adults in 1910 toward two different groups of people, the lower class and the higher class, and the strife that they have between them. What does class mean? Well, if you were part of the lower class, you were part of the poor, and if you were part of the higher class, it meant you were part of the wealthy. During that time, there was strife between the two groups, and the itsy bitsy spider is a metaphor of what transpired, or how they saw themselves amongst each other. The original words were not the itsy bitsy spider, but something altogether different, and changed later on when it became a children's tune. Now, two short years later in 1912, a French composer by the name of Roussel also decided to write a piece of music for a ballet with the emphasis on insects. The main theme was the spider and fruit flies, centipedes, praying mantises, and a fly. I was going to include this in part of your links package, but I couldn't find enough material to include. So, if you're interested and you want to do some digging, go ahead and look for the ballet that was written by Roussel and see if you can find it, if you're interested. If you're also interested a little bit more on the metaphor of what the Itsy Bitsy Spider stood for, you can do so by looking at the lower half on the left-hand side of your sheet. Our next piece of music is the Flight of the Bumblebee. Now the Flight of the Bumblebee is probably the most popular of bee songs or even insect songs for that matter. It was written by the Russian composer Nikolai Rim Rimsky-Korsakov and it was part of the opera The Tales of the Tsar Sultan. It was actually composed 10 years prior to the Itsy Bitsy Spider. So you can see how Insects have had a part in music for quite some time and has trickled down through the ages. One of the oldest pieces of music that has insects in it is actually 500 years old. It was written in 1505 by a French composer whose name was Dupré, and it's called El Grillo, which means the cricket. Basically, the music is has very little words and it's saying oh the cricket is such a good singer since it was written in the 1500s they were more prone to harmonies and the musical notes rather than the actual words so there was the words were very repetitive and so not so much there weren't a lot of words in the song but rather less other than that Crickets really weren't a main theme of music until the 1700s when Telemann decided to write a piece of music called the Cricket Symphony. From that point on, crickets really haven't been as popular as bees or, for the most part, butterflies. The piece of the flight of the bumblebee is supposed to embark the rapidly changing flying pattern of a bumblebee. And if you listen to the orchestral work, there's a lot more than just the bumblebee that is being presented. You can hear a lot more of the chaos between also the wind and 
It invokes a lot more of the imagination besides just the bumblebee. I have included in your links package two sets of instrumentalists, soloists, playing the flight of the bumblebee, a pianist and a flautist. Almost every musician at some point has wanted to play the flight of the bumblebee because it's so much fun and it's very popular in our culture today. When you listen to the solo pieces, you get more of the sense of the actual bumblebee. When you listen to the orchestral piece, you get a sense of all of the surroundings with the bee that's going on. Little piece written about a cockroach. Cockroaches as bugs aren't exactly pleasant. Usually people want to run away, are disgusted by them, or want to squish them if they're that brave. But in this piece, there's more of a metaphor attached to it. The song originated in Spain, and some verses are said to go back to the Ronquista times, meaning the Middle Ages, quite some time ago. But the Mexicans, they made it popular worldwide by, during their revolution. And throughout the ages and times in different countries, individuals have added their own verses. Some of them are humorous. Some of them represent moods. One that I found that I thought was quite cute was, When a boy loves a girl, and if the girl does not love him back, it's like a bald man who finds a calm on a railroad track. I thought that was quite cute and quite humorous. So with the finalization of our theme this week, we've covered many different insects, but there are definitely more that have yet to be explored. And if you are interested, you can go and look at them online. There are compositions written about mosquitoes, the wasps. Um, There's a wasp um, piece of music that was written by... Um, Vaughn Williams that was very very popular and if you're interested in butterflies which yes they don't make a lot of sound but I think composers have been compelled to write music um, because of their beauty and fragility and flight flightlessness how they just jump from one flower to another So if you're interested in that, there are quite a few works. Probably the most works have been written about butterflies, two of which have been French composers, Chanson and Debussy. They wrote a piece of music on the same poem, La Papillon, which talks about a lover and if he could borrow the wings of a butterfly, rather than flying to the roses, he would rather fly to his lover's lips and die. Another metaphor. Other pieces have included Franz Schubert, where he wrote a piece of music called The Butterfly. Um, And there are others as well. Um, There's also songs about mosquitoes and flies. Bartok wrote a cute little compilation of uh, of a song um, that's quite humorous about a a fly and his his wanting to escape a, a hungry spider. So you can definitely take a look because there's much to much to delve into and, and look into if you're inspired. Hi, boys and girls. All right, so this is our movement portion of our class today. We are not going to be doing any dancing, but we are going to be playing a game. Yay! So our game is six different cards of six different insects. And we're going to be going from one side of the room to another. So make sure that you're in a room in your house that has lots of space for you to be able to move. And let's get started. So I am gonna switch the bowl around and I'm going to pull out the card and I'm gonna read it to you and you're gonna do as I do. So we have a spider, we're gonna do a spider. So we're gonna go up on all of our hands and our feet and we're gonna walk, ready? Here we go, up to the air, walking, spider. Once you get to one side of the room, then you're gonna turn around and walk back as a creepy crawly spider. Creepy crawly spider. Good job. Okay, so our next one is 
what is it? It is a butterfly. Okay, so we're gonna stand up, stand up, and get your flappy wings ready. Here we go. And you can run, and you can flop, and run, and flap. I have to keep my wings nice and narrow because my hallway is on the narrow side, and not hit my hands. All right, good. So keep flapping. If you're still running, still flapping, you keep going. All right, next one is grasshopper. Okay, so we're gonna go down all the way to the ground and then we're going to hop, all right? So here we go. towards our feet, okay? Here we go. On your marks, get set, go! Slide, slide that bottom, slide! Keep sliding, all right, turn around. When you get to the end of your room, getting tired by this point, right? Okay. Keep going. Almost there. And we're back at home. All right. What do we have now? Two more cards. An ant. Okay. So for the ant, we're just going to be on our hands and our knees. It's nice and easy. Okay. Here we go. Walk in. Walk in. Did you know that an ant can carry 10 times its body weight? Isn't that cool? Is it 10 or the 30? I thought it was 10, but turn around when you get to the side and keep walking. Now, if this starts to hurt your knees, you can walk up onto your feet, that's okay. But if you're fine, then just keep taking your time, just walking. Getting that coordination. And we have one left. So, whatever could it be? <sighs> ladybug! So, with Ladybug, you're gonna lie on your back and you're going to push your body back with your feet, okay? So, here we go. Push. Keep it going. Let's make this really fun. Let's see if you can beat me. All right. Push, push. Now, for those of you who have beaten me, you guys get a thumbs up. You should let me know. Hey, Savannah, I beat you in movement. I beat you in being the grasshopper. Or I beat you at being the ladybug. Any of them. Go ahead and say, hey, I beat you. Leave it in the comments of the video. I'd love to see you guys telling me how much you like this uh, this movement game and which one you want. If you, if you ended up beating me at the grasshopper or the ant or any of them, leave a comment. Let me know. Okay. All right. Uh, well, the next thing that we have is the uh, rainbow song. So we're going to move on. Okay, so this is the end of our lesson for this week. And we're going to finish with learning the I Can Sing a Rainbow. That's what it's called. So before we begin, we're going to learn the colors in sign language. This is a sign language uh, song. So first of all, I want you to take your fingers and you're going to crisscross them, okay? And then you're gonna put it right where your chin is and drag it down, okay? Right from the bottom of your lip and drag it down. This is red, red, okay? Yellow 
you're going to tuck your other three fingers into your palm. You're going to turn it around and then yellow, yellow. Okay, so red, yellow. Okay, pink, pink, green. It's like making a cup of tea like this. Green, okay. Go back to the same thing as pink, but with purple, you're going to swing it. Purple, orange, like you're squeezing an orange. Orange, blue, and wave, like you're waving, okay? So from the very beginning, red, yellow, pink, green, purple, orange, blue, okay? Now in between all of those colors, you're going to be saying end. How you say end is you just drag your hand like you're pulling something, right? And red, end, yellow, end, pink, and green, purple, and orange, and blue, okay? So for this week, that's all you're going to learn. We're not gonna learn the song yet. You're just gonna learn the sign language for the colors, okay? And the next week, we're going to learn the rest of the song and the melody, all right? So I hope you enjoyed this week's lesson. I miss not seeing your faces and we'll see you next week online. All right, take care, bye.